My name is uh, Kent Abair. Uh, I am the lead survey technician with the New Orleans District Corps of Engineers. We just completed a four-day survey of the West Fork of the San Jacinto River from West Lake Houston Parkway to the I-69 bridge. Um, we're looking for sedimentation spots or anything that could uh, cause uh, backwater flooding uh, after a significant rainfall event. And uh, our mission was highly successful. We were able to collect the data we came out to get and we should be uh, producing some usable data here within the next week. Anything unexpected that you've seen? Um, other than a few apparent shoaling spots, uh, it was as expected based on the satellite imagery we were given prior to the starting of the survey. So we knew the areas to focus on before we mobilized out and we were able to pretty effectively cover all the ground that we needed to model. What was the length of that? Uh, our total length overall from Lake Houston to the I-69 bridge was a little over eight miles. Uh, most of our data was concentrated on a five and three quarter mile stretch from the West Lake Houston Parkway to the I-69 bridge. As a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers hydrologist, I'll be taking the data that was collected for this region to put it inside of a hydrologic model. So as you can see here, we have a log jam on the, uh, on the, on the, on the far side of the I-59 uh, bridge here. Uh, the cypress trees in this area tend to, tend to float three to four feet underwater. Uh, this right here is, is a log jam. Uh, it's caused by the trees in this region that float along the river and uh, it creates essentially a beaver dam that backs up water on the, on the upstream sides of the, of the, of, of the road. It, uh, the trees in this region will actually sink to the bottom and this, this section probably goes all the way to the bottom of this area. Um, it creates a, uh, a high stage environment upstream and uh, could cause potential flooding. So back a couple of minutes ago when we were under the I-69 bridge, we were actually in 26 feet of water. Uh, as we approach this railroad bridge, we're actually only in four, but we'll see after the railroad bridge, we'll drop back down to 16 feet. And this is the kind of uh, transitions we've been seeing in these cross sections where we get this pattern of, of, of deep dives and then subsequent shoaling and more deep dives below them everywhere that there was a, water, uh, a blockage of the water flow during the high water event. So it looks right now that uh, that some of these trusses, trusses for this railroad bridge uh, were damaged during Harvey, and uh, and they were they've since been replaced. Uh, they look pretty much brand new. So uh, the the, le the the left channel here, starting from the left, is the historic main channel of the river, heavily sedimented on the right side. We were able to run up through it. You have about three to five feet of water most of the way, and up at the top, it shallows out to about a foot and a half. And Middle channel. Uh, it shallows up to about a foot and a half deep at the bottom. At the top, we're going to bring y'all. Once I bring y'all around, I'll show you. There's about a 30-foot deep hole at the top of that where there was a, a giant eddy that slowly ate its way through a clay bank and let this overbank form. And on the right side, we have a, a secondary channel that passes near the golf course. Uh, that one maxes out at about eight feet, but averages three to four feet deep most of the way up very narrow channels, um, most of them no more than 200 feet wide. So shoaling is whenever the sediment in the water drops from the water and actually creates sandbars, as you can see off to the left here. And it creates land masses in areas that land was not used, did not used to be. And that is what shoaling is. As the sediment comes in and, uh, and shoals in, um, it's going to slow down the water in this region. And as the, um, as the rain comes in, it's going to cause the water levels to increase and not be at normal stages in this region. So it'll cause, it'll cause higher water elevations with less rainfall and um, it'll it'll increase the stage of this region and also it will slow the water flow and actually increase the sediment dropout in this region because the shoaling has already pretty much stopped the water flow 
in this area. Uh, yes, FEMA distributed some funding to the Texas Department of Emergency Management, and we've been in close coordination with TDEM. Um, they've been a very good partner to work with, and so we started gathering materials for the proposed projects and putting information together for grant applications through TDEM. And as we started preparing that for the dredging project, um, then I believe some additional discussions were had in coordination and it was determined that the Army Corps of Engineers would be a, a good lead for that project. So the Army, the Army Corps of Engineers will take the lead role on the dredging project. It is not going to be a project uh, conducted through the Harris County Flood Control District. The Flood Control District will simply be a partner in any capacity that we can be, uh, but we'll just be in a supporting role. We will not be leading on the dredging project.